Konami dropped a ban list yesterday for World Championships and for the World Championship watch party celebration. If your locals is going to be doing a tournament like that. But I swear, if Konami, you guys are dropping an actual ban list today on the day that I dropped this video. I swear, this was so baited. But also, I got to make another video. And luckily, I work from home, so I'm going to sandwich that video somewhere between my meetings all right that's the perks from working from home but anyways hey guys this is john box you're likely watching this video because you want to win that envelope and i get you this is the closest thing that you're gonna get to a cash prize because past envelopes have gone for four figures now this is a nine pager worth of ban list and i'm going to save you guys the trouble because i read the entire thing broke down all of the significant bans significant nerf to decks just via the limited stuff by overlapping with the ocg and we even go over the top potential decks that you should go in with because some of these decks are completely untouched and likely are going to be the top contenders and i got you covered for that as well so make sure you guys hit that like button hit subscribe ding that notification bell and visit mstmerch.com for all your card game essential needs if you aren't playing the current format and i don't blame you that means you got time to sort through your collection and nothing helps sort your collection better than with our box dividers and subdividers make sure you never lose another card in your boxes ever again need some last minute spice to give you the edge at regionals having a sorted collection lets you do that and don't forget Get our tournament level sleeves the carbon series for those with the perfect silky smooth old pc feeling shuffle feel with more durability and release your inner aura with the willpower series fire godly ego whatever your aura may be let us shine through with the premium foil collection and check it out at mstmerch.com get it now as the summer sale is still live and let's Finally get into this list. So let's take a look at some of the significant bands. Starting off with Cash Tier of Fenrir. Fenrir engine is gone. The Cash Tier engine and the trade of just having multiple Fenrirs just gone. So you're not gonna have a free Fenrir special summon or dig out another Cash Tier monster. I think that's a pretty significant hit, especially when it comes to people playing. I guess Fenrir, they're playing uh, Vanquish Soul. Those are gonna be like out of the question. Try and guess, and most life gain cards, emergency provisions, Rainbow Life. So. Nurse FDK and also Infinite Life Shenanigans, that's out of the question. Totally awesome. Water decks are significantly hit by this, especially Ice Barriers and not only that, but Sprite decks as well because you lose your option to go into uh, your Omni Negate. But not only that, like Sprite is completely nerfed to the ground once we see more cards uh, into the actual limited stuff. Hot Red Dragon King Calamity. This one all well, makes sense because you don't want to watch like a game where people just like make hot red and you know end the game. Uh, Centurion significantly impacted, you know, white forest, white woods completely. Well, they're not really that effective to be honest because they don't actually go into this monster unless they really want to play a degen strategy. Then there is is sold. We still have it. OCG does not. Warrior decks completely nerfed to the ground. As for some TCG significant bands, it would be like the uh, Necroquare Princess and Aerial Eater. Essentially, the Fiendsmith track nerf and New Bell lines are also kind of affected. And then there's the Cannon Soldier. And again, they're not trying to let you FTK against the, uh, your opponent. Uh, but did they really do a good job? So Cannon Soldier, Cannon Soldier Mark to a lot of the solo burn cards, they're all not on the table. So what about the actual nerf to each individual deck that would have major impact? Of course, last year, Dragon Link won. Bestials are completely limited. So limited, you have Magnemut at one, Druusworm at one, Baldrake at one, and also the Bestial Lubellion also at one. I think that's a pretty significant hit, but if you want to use the Bestials as an engine or side deck pieces, you you still have three different names available to you so that's actually not too bad runic one of the significant hits for them would be just one runic fountain but i've seen you know runic players able to kind of just climb their way out even if it's just one runic fountain it's gonna require like a cosmic cyclone to take that out and if you don't account for it that one runic fountain can still do a lot of damage especially when you pair it with toys and white woods and white forest cash tira i don't think cash tira is very much playable at all because limited they have only one cash tier unicorn and one pressured planet rates off that's going to be very very significant tailaments limited every single name sharon havnis Merly, rhino heart and cash tira also limited to one and of course primeval planet perlorano also at one so if you're looking for that consistency this is not it 
But if you can find a way to mill that many cards, I mean, I'm not going to blame you. You can still have the full Horus engine available to you. Actually, I think that might be one of the things that people might look into is the Horus engine. It's, it's still there. It's something that I kind of forgot now that I think about it. Yeah, you can still definitely do it. But uh, you're not going to have the triple tier limits cash tier to give you that consistency. Rescue Ace, you have one emergency from the OCG side. And OCG had two airlifter, but in TCG, we only have one airlifter. So they take another hit there. So technically, they lost about three cards worth of play. Sun Avalon, this is more of a TCG side hit because we have only one uh, Sun Avalon Dryas and one Sunvine Healer. And I think that's still playable if you're Jessica Robinson, that is. Uh, then there is Sprites. Biggest hits to Sprite would be Sprite. Blue, Jet, and Starter all at one. All the significant starters are at one. So that's a pretty big hit. Not to mention the Toad stuff mentioned earlier. Snake Eyes. You have one Snake Eye Ash, one Wanted, and two Bonfire. I mean, it's a pretty big hit. Technically, you lost four cards when it comes to TCG side. Maybe five, you include the Bonfire. Five cards. That kind of just thins you back down to 40 cards, doesn't it? Like, we play 44, I've seen the list, 44, 45, 42, 43, no one plays that close to 40. I mean, now you have a chance to play close to 40. Would you take that chance? Then there is Fire Kings. The only thing that's limited on Fire King's side are actually, is actually a semi-limit. It's a Fire King High Avatar Kirin. High Avatar Kirin, not Kirin, all right? Don't make that mistake. <clears throat> Man, I'm losing my voice here. Branded, Branded Fusion and Bandit Opening are limited to one. Pearly. I mean, this is a pretty big hit for Pearly. Pearly has only one copy of Sleepy Memory, so their ability to draw cards on your turn is basically limited to two cards, one for the initial monster and the other one for the uh, one that gets stacked on top. Semi-limits, only two per my friend Pearly, so the consistency is definitely shot, and only two Delicious Memory. Okay, okay. What about Tenpai? You know, Tenpai, of course, being one of the strongest decks in OCG right now. Banned Koi Belt because it's a TCG card. Uh, there's only one Sangin Summoning, so the, the dream of only having one Sangin Summoning, well, here it is. As for Gimmick Puppet, limited, number 40, Gimmick Puppet of Strings. I think that kind of takes away some of the FTK aspects. I don't think it takes away all their FTKs. I think they still have FTKs, but they lost their line, and only having one Gimmick Puppet of Strings also means that negating Gimmick Puppet of Strings would keep you alive. As for generic limited stuff, we have one Skill Drain, one Pot of Prosperity, one Dino Wrestler Pancrotops. That's some of the overlaps from the OCG. Semi limit side, uh, Super Polys at two, Emergency Teleports at two, Raigeki's at two. And why 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 bother even mentioning Raigeki? It's because we play Board Breaker Tenpai, and that's why it's significant. And there's also two Extravagance, two Desires, two Destiny Hero Malicious, and of course one of the happier thoughts. Only two copies of Dimension Shifter. So, what are the untouched decks? Ubel, Fiendsmith, Ritual Beast, Mementotlin, Ancient Gear, White Forest, Chimera, uh, Infernoids, Drytron, Flunderies, Exodia, and I forgot to put onto this list Horus Engine. Those are the things that are completely untouched and likely will have significant impact. So, if you're trying to find a starting point, well, there you have it. So for some of the best decks out there, I kind of split it into like those with the Fiendsmith core and those without the Fiendsmith core. Those with the Fiendsmith core, we have Ubel, Snake Eye, Chimera, Mementotlin, Rescue Waste, Labyrinth, and uh, this is even with the nerfs from uh, the WCS ban list. And then for non-Fiendsmith, Ritual Beast, Tenpai, Ancient Gear, Runic White Forest, Gimmick Puppet, yes, even Gimmick Puppet still here, although it's kind of lower on the list for me. Flunderies. Branded Drytron. So you kind of notice that most of the non Fiendsmith deck, a lot of them can be playing Shifter. And I almost kind of want to put Exodia in there, but Exodia is just a little too troll to me. <laughs> it's just very, very easy to break apart. Uh, the lines are just not as strong when it compares to some of the meta decks. So which are the top eight contenders in my opinion? Number one, we have the boss, the final boss of this particular format, the, the deck to beat, Fiendsmith U-Bell. It is literally the Overseer because they have almost nothing hit. They're basically playing one format before Rage of the Abyss, so without Fura Wasp, they don't get knocked down a couple of steps. They don't put Tempai at the very top, even with the one field spell, because Fura Wasp just gives them so many things to play with and also when they add in uh, the dominus impulse those are not playable so that makes it so that fiendsmith ubel is at the very top as the most unhindered deck 
you know, unhinged, if you will. And then there's Tenpai. Even with one field spot, it's still ridiculously powerful because they don't have to activate that field spot. It does make them a lot weaker, but they don't have to activate that field spell. If they just have the field spell out there and they just do their place, they minimize the amount of interaction and the ways that they can quickly gain access to an OTK. Tenpai is another option, uh, but definitely a lot weaker because if you choose to destroy that field spell now, it is going to have significant impact and they're going to be very smart with their extra deck to get that OTK. Fiendsmith Snake Eye, even with the loss of the two Wanted, the two Ashes, and the one Bonfire, if you think about it, you still have the exact same full engine that you have to develop your combos. Yes, the recovery is weaker. Yes, the consistency is also weaker, but you can still play three Witches, and the deck previously ran about 44-ish cards. Even for me, it was like 44, 43, 46 at some point. Uh, but cutting those cards out, cutting five cards out, not a significant impact, although it is hitting your consistency for sure. And you might need to actually tech in something a little bit different, maybe some control swap cards uh, just to fill in those extra numbers. I think there is high potential with this deck because you're still developing the same style of end board, but you're eating a ton of hand traps for sure. And uh, one of the things that you did actually lose is actually through the bestial limitation. Like some people are playing like six, seven names. Now you're basically down to three names only. So that's actually one big hit. Ritual Beast, a dimension shifter deck. Yes, shifters at two, but still, if they are able to play dimension, uh, no fissure and stuff like that to kind of hinder your ability to hit the graveyard while kind of benefiting themselves, this is going to be another really, really hard deck to beat because they do develop some really nasty boards and they have access to Arch Nemesis Protoss. And I think everyone's going to know what everyone else is going to be on. And uh, that is a deck that's very hard to play against. It is a shifter deck, nonetheless. Then there's Runic Toy White Forest. I think we've seen time and time again those who are really, really skilled with maintaining interaction against the opponent. Runic White Forest, even with just the one Runic uh, Fountain. Yes, it does make the Runic line a lot weaker. If you open with it, it's a lot more predictable so they can kind of guess your hand. But maintaining one Runic Fountain, not the hardest thing. And it does prevent you from getting the double draw from... Uh, the double draw effect from Runic Fountain, which is probably one of the biggest things, but the tell that you don't have another one is also going to be very, very impactful. So it might skew people to, into trying Cosmic Cyclone. If Cosmic Cyclone gives you that perfect overlap, people might consider it. Some people might even consider it in the main deck because at Worlds, don't forget, you're not just playing like the Swiss rounds. You actually have to play Swiss rounds plus two more rounds. You're still, you're still playing additional rounds at WCS. I, I'm not sure at your locals if they're going to do that, but like that's what people did uh, you know, at the QCC. And so if you want to make top cut, you need that diversity. And then there's like the Fiendsmith Rescue Waste. OCG only really lost it one airlifter and they still have it at more or less full power. It's still a very scary deck that can offer perfect trades. If you're really good at just utility management, then Fiendsmith Rescue Waste is really high up there. And then there's also Fiendsmith Chimera. Chimera isn't like a deck that OCG really thrives on because they have Maxi and whatnot, but in TCG without the Maxi, this deck definitely can thrive, but it does die to Droll. Is Droll gonna be impactful against the list you see above? That's another real question that you might have to ask yourself because Fiends with Chimera has some of the ways to kind of dodge most interaction. If it's just Ash, if it's just like a one or one for one trade hand traps, Fiends with Chimera can dodge all of that. And Diabelze is a perfect way to eat most of the clapback that's from Forbidden Droplet, Evenly Match, all of those big blow cards. And you get to control the entire tempo during your opponent's turn. You play on your opponent's turn for the most part. Anyway, and with the Evil Hero engine, it just makes it so easy. And as for my final pick for top eight decks, this is kind of a dark horse, but I really do believe in the ancient gear. It's essentially Tenpai without getting any of its stuff nerfed, if you know what I mean. But it carries one significant weakness. If people know that you're on ancient gear, they're just going to make you go first because you suffer going first syndrome worse than Tenpai does. And you're not a deck that can truly play shifter. I mean, you technically can. I think you can play Shifter uh, if you want a defensive maneuver. But at the same time, it feels much worse because you can't really set cards if you do you know, engage into your combo. So that's one of the limitations. I almost want to put Drytron in there, but I also kind of forgot that Horus Engine is also a thing. And maybe you could play a Horus Tier Limit as an option. I don't know. There's just so much that is 
unexplored, especially for a format like this, where you just merge TCG and OCG list together and take away all of the uh, all of the burn cards. I mean, you could all kind of also play like Gimmick Puppet, to, to be honest with you. I mean, you just have to do the line where you only use the Gimmick Puppet um, of strings once and try to go for the Giant Grinder, but that also requires you to kind of open the field spell. So there's, there's a lot of limitations here. I thought it was kind of wild here. But that's my list for the top deck predictions. Maybe this is gonna help you get a starting point to win that envelope, the closest thing you can get to a cash prize in Yu-Gi-Oh! because these are worth quite a bit. So uh, just be careful and uh, make sure you guys enjoy the watch party. Make sure you guys make sure your locals has signed up for the watch party. You can actually check if you're on that list. Uh, I think there's a link somewhere. I'll see if I can put it down in the description or in the comment section, or you guys can leave it down in the comment section. But don't forget to check out mstmerch.com. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the breakdown of the world championship ban list, the forbidden limit list for them. If you did, hit that thumbs up button, hit subscribe, ding that notification bell, and I will see you in when the ban list comes out.